30-year-old Solomon Fakiri died while in custody at an Ontario jail back in 2016. The family alleges the 30-year-old who suffered from schizophrenia died after being beaten while awaiting a transfer to a hospital for his mental health issues. Now, Ontario's chief pathologist says he will take over the case, review and update the post-mortem report into Solomon's death. Yusuf Fakiri, Solomon's brother, joins us now. Sir, thank you so much for being with us tonight. How significant is this development for you and your family? Thank you so much for having me. It's a long overdue. Uh, we've been waiting for four and a half years for an institution and government to finally do something, uh, something sincere. And this is the first time an institution and government is looking at my brother's case with a real fresh look. The postmortem report of 2017 is outdated. It does not include the eyewitness account of Mr. John Thibault or the guard that killed um, or the guard that was involved in Suleiman's killing that was fired. Uh, this is a historic uh, event for us, but this is a guarded hope, and the coroner's office needs to get it right because my brother deserves better and my family deserves better. Mr. Fakiri, so are, are these uh, the missing elements that you hope to get uh, more information about so your family can seek closure? Absolutely. And this isn't just about Suleiman anymore. This is about all Canadians and Ontarians who suffer from mental illness within the justice system. There seems to be uh, this issue that people with mental illness, when they're in these institutions, it seems that their lives don't have the same value like the rest of us. And we want accountability for my brother. And to get accountability for Solomon is accountability for all Ontarians who are suffering from mental illness. And these facts that are now going to be hopefully included in the new postmortem report um, it needs to be included because that old postmortem report of 2017 is outdated. That report doesn't even resemble what my brother's case now is part about, and it requires justice for my late brother. And does justice for you also include making sure uh, that all details of this report are made public on behalf of your brother, on behalf of your family, and as you said, on behalf of the community at large? Absolutely. It's a very important question. These information needs to be made public. How did a man with a mental illness act? to his family in a body bag, but had 50 bruises. Both his legs and his hands were tied. He was pepper sprayed twice. There needs to be accountability, and Ontarians deserve to know what happened to Suleiman Fikiri. Today was my brother. Is tomorrow going to be another sister, another father, another mother? There needs to be accountability for my brother, and not just accountability in the sense of criminal charges, but we need to know what happened to Sully. Because if we find out what happens to Sully, maybe another family will not go through what my family's been going through. We've been fighting for more than four and a half years. We look forward for Mr. Dr. Polan and, you know, and his expertise in, in giving us you know, his new uh, revised postmortem report. But this is a historic event because he took the case over from the old pathologist. Okay, you've clearly uh, been through a lot, you and your family. We do wish you the best, sir, uh, with your efforts. We know this is a very sensitive subject. Thank you for your time tonight. We really appreciate this, Mr. Fakiri. Thank you so much for having me.